Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about hiding seams in geometry. So I just use the term seam. There's not really seam. Seams aren't a thing. You know, there's not an entity type called seams. What I'm talking about is that line that can be in there between two surfaces that break them into two pieces. Sometimes that's good because you want to put different materials on one section versus another, something like that. But sometimes uh, through the modeling process, you end up with one chunk connected to another chunk and it should be smooth, but you got a line between them. We're going to talk about how to clean that up. We're going to look at three different instances, one with just raw geometry, one with groups, and then another with components, because how you deal with them might be different. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that right now. All right, first one's first. Sad Captain Obvious. All right, so the first thing we got here is, this is just raw geometry. So I just have these faces. If you're ever doing this, this makes sense. So I got this little, uh, little, little mock-up I'm doing for a tiny home kind of thing here, uh, looking at some windows I could put in. And I got my roof section, which would be built separately from my walls. So I modeled it that way. But now when I look at it, I want to see my siding go top to bottom. And in this case, when it's just raw geometry like this, if these two pieces are in plane, I can, it's just as simple as deleting or erasing those pieces. That done. I mean, it's, pre it's pretty simple. I'm going to undo real quick and, and comment on one thing. If I turn on my X-ray, so we're going to go up here to view edge style and turn on, I'm sorry, face style and hit X-ray. See, there's actually a face in here right there. And then if I look up here, same thing in between, because the way I model this is separate pieces. As soon as I get rid of one of these edges, that face goes away. See how that all disappeared? Same thing down here. So that extra face right there, get rid of that, boom, gone. Uh, and with x-ray, I could actually come through here and get rid of those edges around the back too. Look at that. That's, that's efficient modeling right there. I like that x-ray. All right, let's go ahead and turn that. There we go. And turn x -ray. All right, that looks pretty good. So this is now one monolithic set of geometry, right? This is just one big, hopefully solid piece. If I ever wanted like 3D print or something, I could do that with this. Uh, but yeah, so I got rid of those pieces. Pretty easy if they're in line. If they're not in line, if one piece is angled off the other, there's a chance when you erase that line, it'll break it, and then you'll have a big hole on the side of the model. That happens. If everything's in line, though, like this, uh, that should be good. You should be good just erasing those. Let's talk about what happens when they're groups, right? So this is how I would most likely model something like this. Even in a conceptual situation, I would separate the floor from the walls from the roof. So in this case, if I want a nice smooth, say, say there's just one piece of siding, I want it to look just like this, top to bottom. What I'd have to do is go into this group and I want to go to view, component edit, and hide rest of the model real quick. So I just want to see this piece. So what I could do is I could come in here and I could go to erase and I have my modifier keys down at the bottom. And what I want to do is I actually want to hide these. I want, I want to, I want to make sure they don't show up. So I'm going to turn on I hit shift, hold down shift, and hit all four edges here. So if I go look at that right now, they don't have a, that edge there anymore. I just have the surface. So when I come back out here, I, what, what, they're still there. No, they're not still there. They actually disappear on this piece, but they didn't disappear on this piece. So if I grab this piece, I want to do the same thing. Again, shift erase, drag across each of these four sides. And now when I come out, look what happens. Ooh, nice and smooth. Let's do the same thing at the bottom because practice makes good at stuff. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to erase, shift. And I just have to tap shift too since, uh, what, 2020 or 2021? It's a toggle, so you just tap shift once and that goes, that uh, and hide stays on. And of course, double click. Same thing here, shift, erase, 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 erase. There we go. So I got the same thing. They are separate pieces still. This can look kind of weird if I'm in here in walls and I'm messing around, monkeying around with stuff, and I see that this, you know, this line is missing. It can it can be a little weird sometimes. But uh, again, model for whatever you're actually planning to do. So in this case, if the thing that's important is this final look right here, then it doesn't matter if it looks funny in here because I'm working on the model and I know it's supposed to be there, so it's okay. Uh, as long as it doesn't bother me as I'm modeling, then having that hidden is going to be good because then I can just hop right back out here and everything looks smooth. All right, so these were groups. So each of these, if I click into the info and see group, 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 these were all just solid groups. If I come over here, I actually have a component. So this is going to work a little bit 
different, like I said, working with a group versus a component, primarily because, so I have, you see this, each corner of this table is a separate component. If I double click into one of them, even though I have hide rest of model turned on, they stay here because this is not the rest of the model. This is copies of the same instance I'm working on. There's a separate hide for that. So if I go back up into view, component edit, and turn on hide similar components, then that goes away. All right, so a couple things I wanna talk about here. So one thing, what can happen in models like this is even if I go through and I do the same thing, shift, erase, erase, I get rid of all these edges like this. What can happen sometimes is this face right here can bleed through. So depending on how the shadows are hitting, sometimes as I'm working around here, I'll still I'll get a flicker right along the edge where those two pieces meet. So what I would do in something like this is probably hide this face as well. And rather than using eraser like I just did, I'm gonna undo a couple times and get all my edges back. Instead of using eraser like I just did, what I might do, just to keep it simple, is do a group select from the edge. That, see, now I've got the face and all the edges that make up that face selected. But I can't just hit eraser and hide it. What I can do though is come over to entity info and just toggle the eyeball off, and then it goes away. So it looks like this is a hole now. It looks like I got a big hole in here, but it's not. It's still there, it's just hidden. I can do the same thing over here. Um, I know you're saying, oh, Aaron, you got it. Got this, this cool uh, 3D mouse, so it's real easy to navigate to that side view. It's pretty easy to just use Orbit to slide over here too. If you don't like that, if you don't like getting into a spot where you can do a quick select like that, or if you have more complex geometry, you can also double click. Double click selects the face and all the edges that create that face to highlight, and then I come over here and toggle it all off. So again, now it looks, it looks like I have a hole, right? It looks like this is a problem, but this is still a solid piece. They're just hidden geometry. And when I come out here, you can see how that ties together. So even though I have four pieces, they all look the same. And because they're component, I can do stuff like uh, let's grab, grab this and maybe slide it over, slide it up. And again, it's gonna look uniform because as I'm moving that, it's moving all four pieces because it is part of that component. And even though it's a component, I don't have to mess with, I don't have to like tolerate those edges. If I was taking this out to rendering, of course, it wouldn't matter. Edges don't show up outside of SketchUp. But for the case of creating a drawing inside of SketchUp, hiding those edges, those seams between geometry can be super helpful and super easy. And the nice thing too, is if I'm in here working and I wanna like select that edge or something like that, all I have to do, I don't have to unhide anything. All I have to do, go up to view, go up and turn on hidden geometry, and those will show up as dotted lines. And I could grab that, move that edge around just like I would any other geometry. And then if I wanted to, I'd leave it on too and I get my dotted lines and I can just toggle it off by going to hidden geometry. I really, I highly recommend putting a, a shortcut key on hidden geometry. It is one of the hidden geometry. And the other thing we used here was uh, hide rest of model. I recommend shortcut keys bound to both these commands as you're modeling in SketchUp. This can take you a lot, save you a lot of time make it real quick and easy to do that kind of modeling and editing. So there you go. Quick and easy way to uh, hide those seams between groups, components, I should say it the right way, components, groups, and raw geometry. This of course is not necessary. You could actually go through your entire modeling career in SketchUp for years and years and years and never hide any geometry and just have those lines show up. If that's cool with you, that's cool with me. You do your thing, that's perfectly fine. I, a lot of times, like to have my geometry cleaned up, show smooth, you know, especially in, in buildings, buildings in particular, because like uh, uh, I come from residential architecture and the outside where I have my, my roof, maybe a gable, is separate from the wall below because there are two different groups or two different components or whatever. But I like to have my siding just be nice and clean across there without having that line. And this is how I'd go about it. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this tip. If you use it, if you use a variation of this, there's a different way to do it, or if you use it for a different kind of modeling. Or, failing that, you don't do this, do you have another tip that you think would make a good video? Let us know in the comments down below. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.